it's time to talk about Baldo. All right. Uh, and to, I need some assistance, of course, um, to talk about Baldo. So I have brought with me the Baldo ham. The Baldo ham is in place. There's actually several candidates I have for this. Maybe I'll do it differently, like depending on what I'm talking about. Um, somebody drew this extremely cute police ham. I love it. I think I'm supposed to, it's not like the full desk. I think I'm supposed to like drop them like on top, like right that. And bam, I have like a, the police ham. And then there's another one. Um, oh, I don't know where that one's at. I must have downloaded it to the wrong directory, but it's like, it's just the regular hamster, but he's got like a line of Coke. Oh yeah, here we go. It's a real toss up. I went with the other one cause it's like a full edit. <laughs> Because th that looks like it's the Baldo ham, you know what I mean? Like it's a it's a different hamster that's doing the the nasty stuff, as opposed to my my, my nice news hamster who's just got out the Baldo and like a hundred dollar bill to do some do some lines. I prefer it to be a completely different hamster that I don't care as much about. Okay, my my news hamster would never do coke. He's a good boy. Anyways, uh, the news ham uh, the Baldo hamster is out. So let's talk about Nick. Um, first things first, I would like to relay a theory on behalf of one of my most trusted users on the Kiwi Farms. Um, uh, she, and whoever you think she is, is wrong, I guarantee you. Um, it's Myrna Minkoff. Uh, directly DM'd me. She was so excited with her theory of what, um, of what, because uh, apparently she had an epiphany that nobody else had, had posted, so... She was very proud of it and then sent me a DM to let me know her theory. And I guess I'll relay this because I, I haven't seen anybody else suggest this. And I think it's a really good theory. So I will um, I will comment on it. Uh, here, let's watch this again. I think that in the hubbub of all the new Baldo-related revelations, the classic Baldo uh, bottle lick has been forgotten. So let's uh, see the, the famous edit. Yes, the famous bottle edit. Uh, and here it comes, a little poor, and <laughs> one more time. Awesome. So Nick Ricada did this thing where he licked that bottle for every drop of alcohol, and it made people wonder, what the fuck is he doing that for? And many people just assumed that um, that he was such an alcoholic that he couldn't let a single drop of alcohol go to waste. And his stated reason was that every drop of alcohol in that bottle is worth 80 cents. So it's economic to uh, to not let a single drop go to waste. However, there is a new word that has entered my vocabulary this week as a result of people posting on the Kiwi Farms and also from reading court documents. And that word is polysubstance. Polysubstance, as in more than one. If you are a off the fucking wagon addict, um, you may not stop at one substance, a mono substance abuse such as alcohol or cocaine. You instead will have a poly substance abuse such as alcohol and cocaine. All the all the downsides of alcohol with all the downsides of cocaine abuse. And if you are perhaps on camera and you want to enjoy a poly substance indulgence without getting off the camera to conspicuously do lines every couple of minutes, uh, because a cocaine high, I think, lasts 20 minutes, is what people have said, you might need to mix your substances together. You may need to put the lime in the coconut, so to speak. You may need to put the cocaine in the alcohol bottle. And when your poly substance mix is actually a lot of fucking money, then it would make sense that every drop of it would be 80 cents, and you wouldn't want a single drop to go to waste. So Marinus' theory, which I will now reposit for you all, my listening audience, is that the reason why Baldo licked the bottle is that it was mixed with cocaine, and it was a poly substance. That is your... I think I should do a... I think a great thing to actually add to my stream as like a recurring trend is, the, is a word of the day. So let's start this off this stream your word of the day is poly substance abuse if you want the the full phrase um so by the way um one of the other things that's interesting to me which i will relay is that the police report of the search turned up two things that many people found uh conspicuous 
One was that there was a brown substance. And the police are very careful when they say brown substance to not say heroin, which is what many people would think when they say brown substance or hashish, for instance. The police don't want to like falsely identify that they they obtained because I think it's like if they say it's heroin and it's a brown substance and then it turns out that it's something else. Like, I guess the, it's not valid for the warrant or whatever. It can't be entered into evidence. So they're very general. Like they'll say it's a white powdery substance that appeared to increase his central nervous system's responses. Like, okay, yeah, it's cocaine. <laughs> but they'll never say that because they, if they're wrong, I guess there's problems for them as a result of this. Um, however, I have this theory, which I am particularly fond of. The uh, police report mentioned that there was a brown substance and then there was cocaine, um, which uh, it tested positive for cocaine because they had a field test for it so they could say it was cocaine. And there was several empty 22 LR, which is a very small round, um, under his bed, outside of like a bag. Um, I think he tried to say that the bullets, you know, or, or were like in a, it was just laying on the ground. It was a, an empty cartridge for a 22 LR round. I have been informed, and the many things that I've learned about drugs this week, now, there is a drug called brown brown, which, as it would turn out, is a browned substance. Brown brown is a mixture of cocaine and black powder or smokeless powder from a modern uh, bullet casing, a modern round. So yeah, there is some suspicion that the brown substance is not heroin. Um, as many people have seemed to think it is, uh, though he did have track marks on his arm, allegedly. So that, that would be consistent with heroin. But there is some suspicion that the brown substance that they found was actually brown brown, which would be a mixture of cocaine and smokeless powder, uh, smokeless gunpowder, which apparently increases. It's because uh, it has um, the gunpowder has nitroglycerin in it, I should explain. And the nitroglycerin. Uh, is a heart medication. You will take nitroglycerin if you have some heart complications where your your um, vascular system is too constricted. If you take nitroglycerin, it loosens up your your um your your arteries and your veins. So if you take cocaine and you take nitroglycerin, that cocaine shoots through you real fast and gets you really high really quickly. Um, which is why dangerous fucking junkies will mix smokeless gunpowder into their, their cocaine to get the nitroglycerin for it. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Um, so I don't know. That's just one autistic theory. It's not a fact. I just want to get that out there. That's what people are speculating. There's a lot more going on in the Baldoverse this week. First, let's give a big old shout out to, um, Camelot. Camelot was one of uh, Rakeda's autistic degenerate friends that would show up on his streams and coom with him um, and talk to all the, the line aunts who were showing up on his stream and stuff. And uh, he dropped a little tidbit that nobody knew anything about, but he uh, apparently didn't realize that people didn't know about this. Uh, so let's listen. Matt says, the biggest part that sucks is Nick has actively been lying to his fans for over a year. Side piece, drug swinging. It really sucks. Look, I get it. I don't think viewers should be involved in anybody's personal life. But yeah, it was it was it was pretty egregious. And I think that's kind of what was I was like, come on, man. Like it was it's so egregious. And I can deal with the hooker thing and the drug, like whatever, fuck it. But the hooker thing. Hookers, Camelot. Who mentioned hookers? Apparently, he mentioned it twice. There's just man, there's not much. I I don't know if it was like a blow up situation. Like he blew up real fast. I mean, shit, I blew up real fast. I think I it just. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Camelot fucking blew up. How does he handle the dizzying, dizzying heights of his rapid success? It depends on who you are. And then it was just the getting cons consumed with the the celebrity. I don't know. Um, he's always been humble around me. He's always been really cool. Um, so I've never really thought of it in even that way. Um, but it's just the 
the drugs and the hookers and all that shit the just hookers. got way too fucking prevalent. He said it twice. Way too prevalent. And uh, I guess you can become addicted to that shit too. I don't know. I think they're fucking gross. I'm weird about that kind of stuff. I think uh, hookers are, and strippers are fucking gross. And strippers. Dude, that's bad. That's bad when Camelot, when Kumalot himself is like sneering at you like, oh, you're fucking gross. I, I, I do not know the man, he says. Nobody asked about strippers or hookers. So now there is the insinuation that not only has Rakeda been doing all the things that he's been doing, he's also been going out to like many... Oh, because if you don't remember, on his public Instagram, not only did he like follow a drug dealer who openly talked about selling cocaine on Instagram, he followed like a bunch of prostitutes from Minneapolis. So he's been like openly flirting with and, and associating with like strippers and, and whores, like literal street walking whores in Minneapolis and then going out to fuck them. And like nobody knew this for sure except Camelot, apparently. Um, but we, we had saw the, the strippers and, and prostitutes and stuff on his Instagram months ago. So once again, the only place that knew anything about this, besides Camelot and Camelot's head, up until this post right now. Uh, was the Kiwi Farms. Um, and then this is Legal Mindset, who I have to pr say like that, because in case you don't remember, someone someone in the fucking Baldo chat, um, please, send me the Legal Mindset. Wait, wait, hold on, I'm booting up the chat. Send me the Ralph Legal Mindset clip now immediately. Thank you. I'll explain why, uh, but I'll play this clip. If I were if I were him, my suggestion, Nick, is shut the fuck up, get off of Twitter, get off of the internet, get off of locals, go over there and start talking about a plea deal. You're going to get a lot further than arguing with a bunch of people in a and dude. Oh my fucking god! Oh, my is this guy cross-eyed? He looks cross-eyed. My fucking God. Nick just, uh, Nick just literally, he said, I'm not saying anything else. Talk to me in DMs. And then he drops fucking three, three DMs after that. No, sorry. Three group messages after that stating facts that can be used against him in court. Nick is making statements about the guns and where they are and what they were doing. And, and he's making these statements. In a fucking group DM. This guy is retarded. This guy is retarded. <laughs> I know, He's bro. He's a we've fucking been, idiot. We've been saying this right for now. a while, bro. And I can tell you right now, not I, I, I'm much nicer than a lot of these motherfuckers in here. Because a lot of the people in this group text are fucking clout goblins. I'm going to say that. <laughs> They're going to fucking take advantage of this. Bro, there's like a full-on civil war in the, the law tube area now. Nobody knows what side. They're they're like scrambling. It's like um, it's like how they describe in like an actual war where like when the fighting breaks out and there's like people scattered all over the place and they don't really know like where their side is. Eventually, after a while, they, the front lines stabilize because people will get on either side of that line and make the front line. Before that happens, there's like complete and total fucking chaos where people are scrambling to like arm up and figure out where the fuck the rest of their, their crew is. It's like that. The front lines of the Civil War have not yet stabilized. The Baldo War has broken out. Nobody knows where the fuck their, their allies are, and they're just, like, scrambling to, to figure out what the fuck they're doing. Um, it's really, 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 really funny. Okay, I have multiple links. This one is from Spooderman. I hope that this is it. This better not be some bullshit. Legal Here we go. Mindset. Legal mindset! Legal dick suckers, more like it. Hell yeah, that's that high energy shit right there. He had to, at some point, legal mindset said something like unbe towards like Nick Ricada that he took issue with. And Nick and Ralph had just become friends. So Ralph had to like cut like a 60 second promo making fun of this guy, this boring looking fucking douchebag in a suit with a lazy eye. And Ralph has no idea who this guy is, doesn't know a single fucking thing about him. And all he just knows is that his name is Legal Mindset, he's a lawyer, and he's having beef with Ricada. So he, like, tries to cut a promo where he's just like, Legal Mindset, Legal Mindset, more like Legal Dick Sucker, bish. The only legal I care about is not going back to jail, 
motherfucker. <laughs> it's just like the most retarded shit ever. But I had never heard of legal mindset until I watched that clip. So now whenever I see legal mindset, I think legal mindset. More like legal dick sucker, bish. Uh, cool. So that's legal. The as I mentioned, the front lines are stabling. Nobody no quite knows for sure where they are in the Baldo War, which is taking place. Uh, as I've dubbed, because I've congregated all these posts into a new board called the Baldoverse Collapse. This is the end stage Baldoverse. Um, <laughs> people, <laughs> there's chaos. There's pandemonium. Um, Nick Riccata is back. He's deleting some posts, such as this post where he says. Uh, in response to Medicare saying, Aaron, or quoting Aaron M. Holt, you wouldn't believe how dirty it was. I had to sweep and vacuum and cook and do laundry and, and then Rikay says, Lamau, I mean. Um, and I will get into that in just a second. Uh, Rikada, in response to Medicare talking about the Kino Casino interview with Aaron M. Holt, to be clear, on Sunday, there was an interview between Aaron M. Holt, the Still Tone Morning Show guy, um, who was the husband of the April woman that Rikada was fucking. Um, he got on and, uh, I get the sense that Aaron Imholt is completely and totally unreliable. He sounds completely full of shit. Oftentimes it feels like he's just making stuff up as he talks. Uh, I, I would not take anything he says without a serious grain of salt. Um, he just sounds like, he, he just sounds like a professional bullshit artist. If you don't know what that is, hold up. Let me, let me explain to you what a bullshit artist is. Hold on. Okay. This is very important. This is very important content. Um, but this will adequately explain who Aaron M. Holt is. Where the fuck is this? I want the clip. I have to go to YouTube. I tried to use it in Duck, Duck, Go. That was a that was a mistake. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah. This is the right clip, I think. U double L S H I T new word A R T I S T spells bullshit artist. I say again, bullshit artist. Just constant. What is with all these like gross memes? Meme spider, meme spider, meme graduate, meme spider. And it's all the same fucking video of mom and dad's son, you're adopted, and it's like a woman getting like fucked. Dude, this is what the algorithm. I'm not logged in. I'm using a VPN. I'm on a browser that doesn't keep any data. And when you just search bullshit artist and watch a movie clip, you get suggested four different videos that are the exact same fucking clip bait that is like obviously pornographic. Bro, come the fuck on. Anyways, um, basically, Aaron M. Holt's uh, recount of this was that Verkata and is like a terrible parent, and it's mostly his fault. And poor Kayla was just strung along, but Kayla was like so in love with Aaron. He was just so uh, unresistible, and she loved his penis, and his penis worked great, and Nick Verkata's penis didn't work one time, and April had to ask him for a Viagra once. Because uh, even though Aaron's penis works extra super great, uh, he keeps Viagra just in case, I guess, and so on and so forth. It was, but he kept like like trying to show like what a great person he was. Because it was like, man, I would like sweep, and then like they would break, they would throw like one time Nick threw like a, a glass against the wall, screaming at Kayla. So I got out the broom and I swept it up, and then I cleaned all the dishes so I could cook all the kids like um spaghettios and stuff and then you know Rikay was just being so irresponsible and he was up in his room fucking my wife and it was just like like he just kept going on and on about he was like a good janny and he swept it up and he he gave a <laughs> he did all sorts of shit he lost his wife to Rikata. just like kept going on and on and he was trying to like frame this all at, oh dude <laughs> he he said that he literally he literally went down and got like a snack tray for them once like he was bragging about how he was the responsible one so he got like this snack tray and fed them all snacks during their their swinging group so he was like hold 
<laughs> he was trying to like to, like buff himself up and be like, yeah, you know, I took care of things. I got the snack tray and stuff. And I was like, bro, you, you're a cuck. <laughs> you're telling the story about how you're a cuck, Jenny. How you were sweeping it up. And then I remember he, um, cuck, Jenny, Aaron was was talking about how the Kiwi Farms didn't do anything to Rakeda. I happen to have a memory longer than one week, and I remember when Aaron, immediately after the arrest, blamed the Kiwi Farms entirely for the Rakeda losing his fucking mind. Does anyone, like, he literally said this. He literally said that it was our fault, and it was like a week ago. And now when he's on the Kino Casino and he realized that we're the cool people in this situation, he's he realized that on this Baldo Civil War, he wants to be on our side when the front lines stabilize. But a week ago, he didn't. A week ago, he was blaming us. And then as more information came out, he changed his allegiance and changed his story completely. I don't accept, I don't accept, I don't, I, I disavow this guy. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go on my um, prediction here. It's early on, but I want to make it clear. Aaron M. Hall is a fucking retard cuck Janny who, who catered to Rakeda and his wife and his girlfriend or, or his own wife who he lost to Rakeda with the, with the silver platter snack tray with the drugs, with the sweeping it up, with the making his children spaghettios. He is a literal cock Jenny. And I, I refuse, I, I do not know the man, okay? I, I'm not, and he blamed us and then we backtracked it like a bitch later on, only when it became obvious that there was no way to swing that. Fuck that guy. Don't like him, simple as. I don't even need a reason. I just don't fucking like him. Anyways, that's him. Um, oh, this is him talking to Rakeda. Hey, lady, keep it shut. I was more coherent for these conversations than you were. Only one of us has gotten our wives arrested due to our drug habit. If you'll excuse me, I have to go make dinner for my children. Oh, dude, and then he was talking about... Oh, my God. This guy's like a literal fucking retard. He was talking about how the big thing that happened that made um, him kick Rakeda out of his house and, like, disavow him. And this was also when his wife, like, completely left and stopped living at his house. He brought... Um, he had uh, custody of his kids for that weekend or whatever. Rakeda and his wife come up to swing so that he can uh, feed them snacks. He, While Rakeda is laying in bed, snorting cocaine... Uh, his arms wrapped around both his wife and April's at the same time. He can come up there with uh, the the grapes and hand feed Rakeda grapes fresh from the vine. As Rakeda came over for this event, at his expense, he um had what was called like a bullet container of cocaine, um and apparently it fell out of his pocket and was next to his four year old son on the couch. So by by a creation of his own mind. Rakeda was there next to his four-year-old son with a bullet of cocaine sitting between them. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And he takes no responsibility for this. Like, uh, maybe he did. I think he took a little bit of responsibility for it. But it's just like, I don't know how you can be, like, mad at Rakeda. I don't know. And you say, like, you know, he didn't say any of this shit until after he got arrested. He didn't report this. He didn't report any of this. I, I mean, I guess you can't say, like, oh, you should talk to the police because police are evil. But... I don't know. It's just like you, you set this up and you can't absolve yourself of responsibility. You're equally culpable for this. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty fucking gaudy, the whole thing. Uh, so this is Autistic Wright um, and his summary of the Kino Casino stream. Aaron claims to be madly in love with Kayla, uh, Rakeda's wife. R Kayla and April did lesbian shit Christian families. April was the corner demon and death succubus. They were confirmed swinging. Baldo self abuses and tard rage, and after domestic incidents, which means he um he hits himself around the head when he's upset, which is a huge fucking retard energy. The four of them slept in the same bed. Imagine the smell. Part of the story was that he was sleeping in their bed, like all four of them. I guess they had like a California king, and they were doing this while all five kids were in the house. So it's like. How does the 16-year-old not know what's happening when mommy and daddy have a second couple, like, sleeping in their fucking bed? You know what I mean? Um, the kids would see all four of them walk out of the bedroom. Baldo and Kayla went to hedonism, too. Baldo has erectile dysfunction. Um, I mean, only that one time he said that he needed the pill. 
Um, okay, so the the nanny was a thing, and the nanny apparently left the house at some point because it was in such disrepair. That's uh, one of Aaron's stories. Uh, Aaron was there as a house elf. He had to cook stuff, clean up the place, and so on. Um, he, there was a dishwasher full of spilt whiskey glass. Carpets were gross and stained laundry everywhere. Kayla was upset over Baldo licking the bottle. She cried. <laughs> Aaron wanted out. Baldo was mad and said, you led my wife on. Uh, Baldo would constantly cope and see about the Kiwi Farms in conversations. Baldo claimed Noel was the one profusely texting him in the shower, not the other way around. Um, which is complete and total bullshit. Even after the sh shower call, by the way, he would occasionally send me a text message, and I would just ignore him. I never spoke to him again after the the shower thing. I was just done with him. He kept sending me, and it was all like the same kind of cope, where it's just like you don't ask me about how my feelings are, or when I tell you stuff like, oh, after like the Montograph thing, when I called him, I was like, well, that's what I remember. And I just stopped replying to him after the shower thing. Baldo punched a hole in the wall like a tar rage, like Bossman Jack. Um, after he was kicked out of the homeschool co-op, which I didn't know about. I don't know. Apparently he was not permitted to teach the kids anymore. Um, he trashed Vic. By the way, the, um, the guy, um, Alex Stein, Alex Stein was set to talk to Vic Bignana about, um, Nick Ricada. And I don't know if it was supposed to be like a tell-all or Vic was taking his side, but after what I'm about to say, um, Vic canceled that, um, that stream that was supposed to happen with Alex Stein. Um, so, and it's, and it's a direct consequence of the, the, it's a direct consequence of the, um, uh, allegations and the, uh, search warrant that I'm going to read. Um, so it's pro probable that Vic was supposed to take, uh, defend Nick a little bit. And I don't think that's happening anymore. Um, but this, by the way, is part of the reason why I really think that Aaron M. Hall is a fucking liar. Because I've, I've spoken to Vic at length about Vic Mignogna. Um, and my, my thing that I really pressed Nick on is I am 100% convinced that Vic Mignogna is a homosexual. And I do not know why his defense in this proceeding was not that I did not have any inappropriate sexual contact with these women because I am a homosexual. I think that he should have said that. Um, and Vic, uh, Nick com completely... And totally refused to to even entertain this. He said he's completely straight. He's married to a woman. Um, he got into trouble for cheating on her with a woman at some point in their relationship. Um, he fraternizes with female fans all the time. He's completely straight. So for Aaron to come down and say that Nick bad talked Vic's sexuality to him um, is completely and totally out of character. And granted, you know this is like proper baldo nick that he was speaking to the guy that um is doing brown brown allegedly so maybe i don't know maybe he became more reckless and like started shit talking vic or maybe he just didn't tell me because you know i'm the kiwi farms guy but that is completely and totally 100 percent not in line with my conversations with nick at any point aaron bought our wife star trek figurines <laughs> They had a snack tray cooler in the bedroom. It was apparently a device that keeps snacks cool. Would oh, anyone need this in the bedroom? Oh, um, one of the things that he did is that he bought uh, Kayla on their side. Because apparently it was April slept on the far side of the bed Nick next to her. Kayla between him and Aaron. And then Aaron was on the far side of the bed on, on one side. And he bought for their side of the bed like a Frigidaire mini cooler. So that's why he's the snack lad, because he literally bought, like, a fridge to keep snacks in so that everybody could stay, could eat. <laughs> he, he literally contrib contributed a fridge for snacks. Um, Baldo brought narcotics to Aaron's place, one of those plastic bullet toys with cocaine in it to fill it out. Um, and his four-year-old, oh, I, th I thought it was between them, but he says the four-year-old child actually started to play with it. So he picked. He, it wasn't just between them on the couch. The four-year-old picked it up, like the bullet of cocaine. Um, supposedly he brought an entire like. Oh, I remember this. Like his story changed a little bit. He like brought like, like an entire like crack safe full of cocaine to Aaron's house. Um, apparently Baldo has a humiliation fetish. Um, Baldo doesn't make his wife come, though. Of course, Aaron totally makes April made April come on the reg with his big functional penis. Uh, okay, so Baldo took a St. Andrew's Cross to a hotel. Um, that is 
a bondage device. It's just like a like the a letter X. It's a it's a cross that's um on its side so that and you're supposed to tie like each appendage, like each hand and foot to each corner. It was like a bondage thing. And apparently he took this folded up to a hotel room that they went to together. Uh, apparently, uh, Riccardo would talk about Alyssa clips and conversation and complain about her. Um, Dick apparently knew about the swinging. Kayla fucked Aaron for his birthday. Aaron got annoyed at Baldo's peeping Tom behavior. When Baldo was cheating on his wife, he confronted Aaron and her wife when they were in bed. Um, he says that he raw dogged it because he was uh, snipped. He had a vasectomy, so he just raw dogged Kayla, apparently. Um, okay, so there's one thing that's missing in this that I remember, and that was that Rakeda was apparently, according to Aaron, very obsessed with the details of how he was having sex with Kayla. And his story, which, and this, this is one of the most interesting things that I think might actually be true, is that he claimed... Um, Rick, Nick would like pause his, apparently like he was having sex with Kayla, like during his streams. And if Nick left his stream and encountered them together, he would start demanding details about what kind of sexual contact they were having. Um, and that would explain, like if they were arguing about stuff like that, that would explain why he kept leaving for like 45 minutes at a time. Like if he was like demanding answers, like, did you fuck her? Did, did she give you a blowjob? What happened, huh? What happened? So even though it was like a thing where they were like seeing each other's wives, he kept demanding like like he kept like possessive, but would want like to take. He was like okay with it, but he would want information about it. Um, this 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 I'm willing to accept because it's such a weird story, um, and it aligns with those gaps in his streams that nobody knows what he's doing. Um. Aaron apparently has nude images of, of him and Kayla together. Um, he says Baldo does have a trust fund. And Riccato was read the site, which we already knew. So that was Aaron's appearance on the Kino Casino. Um, like I said, I, I don't believe a lot of what he says, but uh, he was a pretty good storyteller. At least some of, a lot of it was funny. And then today, just today, um, Useful Mistake got a copy of the search warrant from the, uh, so this is the search warrant. So this was the, the way you get a search warrant is that a petitioner, usually the police, asks a judge for permission to invade somebody's privacy, um, search them and their person in accordance with the Constitution. So they had to write... Um, quite a bit, and then there's the details of what they actually found as a consequence of the search warrant, um, and I'll read that in a second. Let me drink some water. All right. Okay, so application of search warrant. Oh, and this is the beginning of the... Uh, so they're applying for the property and also for the... Um, for the people. Uh, your affiant is a detective Quinn Pop Pomplin, a licensed peace officer in the state of Minnesota. Your affiant has been employed with the Candy, Ohio County Sheriff's Office since 2013. Since 2018, your affiant has been assigned to the detective division on a full-time basis, focusing on felony-level crimes, including but not limited to criminal sexual conduct, homicide, death investigations, missing persons, fatal motor, motor vehicle crashes, burglary, Etc., including child abuse and financial crimes. Your affiant was assigned to the Candy, Ohio County Sheriff's Office Patrol Division for investigating street level crimes, including but not limited to driving under the influence, etc. Um, your affiant was employed as chief of police for the Sacred Heart Minnesota Police Department, which included responsibilities of administration, investigations, and patrol. Um, your affiant is very well qualified. Case background. On May 16th, 2024, Candy, Ohio County Sheriff's Office Sergeant Dave Nestor received a report regarding possible con child neglect and a controlled substance use. The reporter indicated that Nicholas Robert Riqueda residing at blah, 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 um, in Candy, Ohio County. He resides at the residence with his wife, Kayla Christine Riqueda, and five children ages 6 to 16. The reporter indicated that four people from their church had gone to him reporting neglect to the children, possible controlled substance use, and a questionable, and a questionable relationship with an additional couple. It is reported 
that Nicholas is a show, social media blogger, and he and his wife Kayla have befriended hosts from a different local social media blogger. Those individuals were identified as Aaron M. Holt and April M. Holt. Your affiant knows personally these are personalities of the Steel Toe Morning Show, which used to be in St. Cloud, Minnesota. However, as of recent years, the show has been a social media entertainment show strictly based online, which aligns completely with the Kiwi Farms thread on him, by the way. Um, however, as of recent years, oh, I heard that. Uh, it was reported that M. Holtz may have been staying with Ricadas and the home was in disarray and cluttered. It was reported from a church preschool teacher that the children had complained of being hungry, not being fed, and wearing the same clothes for three to four days at a time and would start to smell. Nicholas was reported to being lethargic and appeared high or drugged driving a car around. Another individual advised the reported that Nicholas walked out randomly during sermons at church and have been noticed behavioral changes in him. And have noticed behavioral changes in him. It was alleged Kayla looked anorexic and Nicholas has lost a substantial amount of weight recently. One individual described Nicholas as having injection of track or track marks on his arms. The reporter reiterated concerns for possible neglect and or controlled substance use within the home. The affiant started to review Riketa and the Amholt social media blogs. The blogs are commonly related to legal issues and high-profile tri trials as Nicholas is a licensed attorney. Nicholas is known to drink alcoholic beverages excessively on these video blogs. I immediately noticed that Nicholas's appearance in recent months has changed. In videos from January 2024 compared to May 2024, Nicholas appears to have lost weight, appears tired, and over overall appears strung out, common with controlled substance users. Nicholas commonly refers to his studio as his basement and his own residence. Nicholas has been the victim of swatting phone calls and is known to your affiant and the Candy, Ohio County Sheriff's Office because of these calls. When the Candy, when they responded to his house address. Um... While reviewing M. Holt's social media blogs, Aaron recently indicated that he and April are getting a divorce. Aaron goes on to say that he has experimented with cocaine three times and Molly six or seven times over the past recently. Um, in December 19th, oh, very, very incidental date, the M. Holt's broadcasted a podcast from Mercatus Studio with the podcast being named Live from Spicer. Throughout M. Holt's video blogs, it appears that they and the Mercatus were friends and may have recently had a falling out. It should have been noted that in the recent videos of M. Holtz, April has at times appeared tired, lethargic, and strung out as well. In both Nicholas's and M. Holtz video blogs from Arcata Studio, it is apparent that they are in the same room and the items in the background appear the same. At one point during the M. Holtz video, Nicholas walks in the background and grabs an item, which would show that the background is on the backdrop curtain and that the layout of the actual room. Um, on May, 2020, May 22nd, so very recently... Um, M. Holt did a video blog where he talked about Nicholas and insinuated controlled substance use and also referenced a video blog that Nicholas put online um, the day before that has since been taken off the lowercase i internet. M. Holt indicates that this blog, or in this blog, that Nicholas needs help and needs to get help for his kids because of the substance abuse. M. Holt points out a time in the video where Nicholas has a white powdery substance on his nose. On the following day, your affiant was able to review the video that was taken off of Nicholas's YouTube and Rumble social media sites. Hmm. I wonder where Mr. Quinn was able to acquire a copy of this video that was taken down from Nicholas's YouTube and Rumble social media sites. I wonder what website the officer went to to find a copy of this video. What do you guys think? Uh, the video is from uh, May 21st and is of Nicholas in uh, his basement studio talking about a court appeals ruling he lost. He appears in the video to be drinking alcoholic beverages and eventually appears under the influence of a substance or substances. The entire video is 4 hours and 4 minutes long. Approximately 2 minutes and 46 seconds into the video, Nicholas leaves to go to the restroom. Oh, I think this was minutes. 2 hours and 46 minutes. He, when he returns at 2 Two hours and 50 minutes in, he appears to be making an excited look and has white powdery substances on his nose. Your affiant believes his behavior is indicative of central nervous system simulants. Your affiant believes, based on training and experience, as well as behavior of Nicholas, that, the, that he ingested this white powdery substance through his navel cavity while off camera. Your affiant knows, through his training and experience, that ingesting controlled substances through the navel cavity 
or nasal cavity is common amongst controlled substance users and is often referred to as snorting. Your affiant also noted that throughout this video, Nicholas is so under the influence of a substance that he at one point has to close his eyes to read his screen, rambles, and slurs his speech. Nicholas would obviously not be able to care for his children in this state of intoxication. It should be noted that your affiant was a drug recognition evaluator for several years, and based on your affiant's training and experience, the behavior of Nicholas in his video blog indicates polysubstance use, meaning that it is believed he is ingesting more than one substance based off his behavior. Being both excited and nearly passing out, this is a consistent behavior of both CNS stimulants and depressants. Your affiant believes that the report of neglect and controlled substance use are consistent with the previously mentioned information. Your affiant is requesting to search the address for items listed in relation to welfare of the children in the home in relation to a controlled substance investigation. Your affiant is also requesting to search Nicholas Ricardo. Um, I declare that everything is true. And then, whereas the application of Quinn Pomplin was duly represented and read by the court and fully advised on the premises, now, therefore, the court finds probable cause that cause exists for the issuance of a search warrant signed Jennifer K. Fisher. The search warrant for Ricada's house was signed by the presiding judge of his civil case and now his criminal case. The, the, the judge who he describes in this video that was mentioned on May 21st, 2024, as uh, having alcohol leak out of her vagina, that's his judge that signed his warrant, that presides over his civil case and will preside over his criminal case. Um, if you live in a small town, do not make enemies of the, the courts and the police. That's my suggestion to all of you, because it appears that Ricardo did not learn that lesson and has pissed off a judge. <laughs> Oh, it's like pottery, it rhymes. That's right. So what did we learn from this? We learned that four people indicated to the pastor um, those evil prudes from his church, as Ricada complained about, uh, the people that deal with his children on a daily basis, the people in his micro-schooling micro program, um, confided to the pastor that they were concerned about Ricada. They believe, and this is exactly what I said. I bet you they they saw him driving DUI, and they reported it. At least one of them did. One of them reported that the children were malnourished, hungry, arriving to class without food. Um, they stank. One of the teachers literally saw Ricada's children and went, "Uh oh, stinky! Uh oh, stinky!" and reported this to the pastor and said, "Bro, what the fuck." Um, they all noticed that he lost weight. They all noticed that he and Kayla looked like shit. They reported to the pastor who reported it to the police, as a mandatory reporter has to do. And so the, the police then, receiving this information, said, Hey, I know this guy. He does a law show. Let me see if I can find some videos of him. He went onto the, the YouTube channel for Ricada and saw that um, he looked like fucking shit and thought, Holy shit, he is absolutely killing himself. Went to... Amholt's YouTube channel, watched his latest stream where he expresses concern for Ricada, outlines that they're horrible drug addicts, and then is talking about a stream that he can't find. So I guess he goes to Google or Bing or whatever, types in Nicholas Ricada live stream, finds the Kiwi Farms, watches an archive of it, and then um, decides based off of this that he's a... Uh, uh, <laughs> intoxicating himself with poly substances and is endangering his children in the process and applies for a warrant based off this uh, information, which, by the way, contrary to what Robert Barnes is saying on Twitter, is not insufficient for probable cause. That's definitely enough to get a warrant to go check. And then, of course, they check, and uh, what do you know? The house is fucking filth. Um, the kids are hungry. They haven't had their SpaghettiOs in weeks since the snack boy left. Uh, and it's just a tragedy all around. So that's the update with Ricada. The search warrant has come out. Yeah, dude, it's... And we all knew. Like, people talked about this for, for months on the forum. Like, we all knew that he had a falling out with his church. We all knew that he looked like shit. We all knew that he was doing cocaine on top of doing alcohol. We knew that because they were both engaging in, like, weird swinging sex and because they were both doing substances together, that there was no fucking way that you can maintain a household. 
Like, it's hard enough for me to clean my space. What the fuck is it like with one child? If you have, like, one child and you're trying to take care of one child, it must be fucking, like, a full days of work to keep everything tidy. You have five kids, even if they're older, like, it would be a full, t it, it, it is full-time work to keep your space clean. If you have five kids, there's no way around it, even if they are responsible. And then you try to, you try to, do part-time parenting and then part-time swinging and part-time drug use, there's not a fucking chance. There's no chance in hell that you can juggle five kids, especially when they're in like a weird micro-schooling program and not like a, like a, a public school program where you can just get them to fuck off like 10 hours a day. There's no chance in hell that you can adequately care for, for, for five kids while juggling swinging and, and cocaine. You know, there's just not a chance. There's not a chance. Um, yeah, and streaming. Like, there's just, there's just no way. It's just, there's literally no fucking way. The odd hours that Ricada was up at night, like, there's not a fucking chance. It's, it's really sad. Because it was, it was sad a while ago when he realized that it was just, like, an alcohol problem. And he was, like, being, a, a like, a shithead. And you're like, bro, you're supposed to be, like, trad. Everyone liked you. And now you're, like, a loser. <laughs> You're literally like a deadbeat dad, and then it's like okay, so they're like properly neglecting the kids, and they they're not the littlest ones aren't even taking showers or or and they're having to like recycle their clothes because they don't have any more clean clothes. Like what a fucking like travesty. And you, know, you know it remains to be seen because the laws of what represents an emergency, like in child protective services, is always different state by state. So, you know, who knows? Imagine how disruptive that is, especially when you have, like, a weird, like, micro-schooling program. You know, you're, like, you're a six-year-old and you're used to going to all these different people's houses to learn lessons from, like, in, like, these small classroom environments. Well, you get yanked out of that and put into a system, even if it's, like, a relative, a relative's house. A relative isn't going to, like, drive you around to all your micro-schooling shit. You're going to public school. So you're six years old. And, you know, you're you're suddenly moved out of the only house you've ever known. Mom and dad aren't around because they're dealing with a court case. They might be going to jail for 25 years. You're now in, like, this completely different environment. And then you're not even going to go to your micro-schooling because you, your um, foster parents probably both work and they can't do that. So you're just going to go to public school. And then you're, like, this weird, traumatized six-year-old going to fucking Minnesota public school, probably near Minneapolis for the first time in your life, and you're sitting next to Madhul Ahmed Sheikh Akbar, you know, like, what? A, that's, uh, like, that's genuinely, like, I never recover from this. I'm now fucked up in the head. I'm, I'm traumatized for the rest of my life. I'm going to go to therapy because, uh, my safe, comfy life was ruined instantaneously by my retard father and, and mother. You know, it's like, fucked. No, it's it's really sad. Um, and I, and by the way, since I saw a lot of people on Twitter saying this, I never wish this on Nick. I didn't. I'm not happy. I just, does anyone think that I'm happy that that Rakita's life is fucked up and his entire family is going to be traumatized as a result? Does anyone think that? I don't think anyone's happy. I think a lot of people are are. Um, pleased to see someone smug and condescending like the way that he has but that was like as an addict uh, there's very few people who are genuinely happy that Rakita's life is fucked up I'm not one of them and I don't know why people project this bullshit on me like the Kiwi Farms ruined him and Josh Moon is so happy that Rakita's life is over no I'm not no they're not what's wrong with you they constantly do this too I'm not <laughs> okay 4K Tra is happy. It is, <laughs> it is like it is like a disgust thing. Like I'm, I'm shocked, and I, I, I of course enjoy drama. Like it's interesting that I, I get to see this, um, and I, I do enjoy drama, but like I'm not happy that Ricada's whole thing is fucked up. And I see that Tetrabex is trying to bankroll my entire, <laughs> my entire flight to the U.S. I will get around to this, okay. Um, okay, so, I will listen to Existence, yeah, right. 
All right, so there's one more thing. Um, after this came out, I made this. I, I showed this picture of of Dick and uh, I should I have to be I have to do the the full intro. I did this picture of Dax Herrera, aka Judy the Cow, man who gets fucked in the ass while dressed as the cow, and Beat of the Pedo, Christopher Giswaldi, aka uh, open pedophile. Um, and they were just smugly schmuckly. Like if you want to know what it looks like when you're happy that someone's life is fucked over, this is what this looks like. They're la- they. Uh, Riccati is their friend. They talked to him. They apparently uh, they were a confidant for Nick Riccati talking about his swinging and other exploits. Um, so they're like schmuckling about this. Um, so I, I have since taken this and I have superimposed it over a group of hungry children to emphasize their their smug libertinian libertinian libert, libertarian preening about how does this affect you personally. Drug prohibition is ruining families. The real crime is that someone narked on them. I just want to like super. Impl- I just want to make like an artistic statement here using AI imagery as a, as an accessory. I hope that this conveys my feelings towards uh, Dax Rourke, aka Juju the Cow, a man who gets fucked in the asshole dressed as a cow, and uh, Christopher Vito Giswaldi, the pedophile. I don't already played that. Um. Yeah, he's just been. He's there's nothing interesting about him. Someone was concerned that I would start talking about Dick more often on my podcast. I uh, do not worry. I intend not to talk about him as quickly as possible. Okay. So, did you put the symbol on the hat? Yes, it's an advertisement for their show. Usually, he just wears like an ad for their show. Um, and I don't like advertising them, so I just replaced it with a pedophile symbol <laughs> to, to hammer home the, the point. All right. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!